a strong communicator now. So congratulations. I don't know. I mean, so I would give this guy, Dr. What was it? Who wrote Fredrickson? Oh, a woman uh, who wrote this book a lot of credit. Except I gotta say, this brain coupling idea. See. I don't know about you, but I don't want someone sharing my brainwave. I think you should maximize the amount of brainwaves involved in the conversation, but that's just my personal preference. But thank you for that. Okay, we now have the sensational Kara Snyder. I could feel the sound of feet pounding in the stadium under the tin roof. The smell of sweat filled my nostrils and blinded my vision. All I could see was that goal. The ball gets passed to me, it's between my feet. I dribble past a defender, do a little Honajin like this, you know. <laughs> the crowd goes wild, I kick the ball in, and go! <laughs> that was it, I was hooked. I loved being an athletic celebrity. <laughs> I was 23 years old. I had just arrived in Brazil on a Fulbright scholarship where I was sent to represent the United States and teach about American culture. Whatever that means. <laughs> so there I had dreams, you know, I was going to Brazil. I had dreams of being in Rio in my little Brazilian bikini on the beach. I was gonna learn how to surf. And I, la I learned that I was placed in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Three days away from Rio, 10 hours away from the ocean, I was in the middle of nowhere. Now when you go abroad on this capacity, this kind of privileged capacity, you're able to make yourself into whatever you've always dreamed of being. So there in the middle of the desert in Brazil, I made myself into a star athlete. <laughs> now I had had some fame growing up. <clears throat> when I was eight years old, I was on the eight and under swim relay team, county champs, third leg. <laughs> in high school, I was on the cheerleading squad and we were really well known in the bustling metropolis of Greenbelt. <laughs> In college, I, my cross-country team was, wait for it, Division Three Champions! Yes! So as you can tell, you know, I had kind of had this, you know, I was, I was bred to be, to be an athletic great. And so I arrived in Brazil and I had that amazing experience in the soccer stadium. And I decided that I was going to do all the sports I had ever wanted to do. And the first one, after soccer, was boxing. My cousin Monica, her name, we called her Monster, she was a really, right, appropriate. She had these massive hands, and she was a killer boxer, and I'd always wanted to box like Monica. I thought she was just the coolest person. And you know, then there was Million Dollar Baby. I wanted to be like that, except for the whole break your neck thing, <laughs> you know? So I was like, okay, let me try this out. So I get, you know, I get to the boxing gym, and I'm the only woman and um, quickly, you know, after the first soccer match, I developed a nickname, like, Cara means dude or expensive or face in Portuguese, so I couldn't really be like, expensive dude face, like, hey. <laughs> so immediately the people started calling me Americana Galagona, which means the big white American woman. <laughs> So there I am in the boxing ring. I'm training for four months, you know, Galagona, Americana. And I think I'm really hot. Like, there's no, there's no women. Everybody comes to watch, probably because I'm big and white, but I think it's because I'm really good. And um, I have a couple sparring matches, and finally, I'm pegged to go against Felipe. Felipe. Six foot tall five foot arms, he's training for the Olympic team, and they, need, they just need people to spar against him. So sure enough, Galagona Americana. It's Friday night, and I'm in the ring, you know, and I am ducking and bobbing. I, I look like one of those little bobblehead dolls, you know, the bobblehead dolls. And I pause for just one second, just one second, and boop, Felipe like pokes me, and I get, ooh, I get like two black eyes. <laughs> and this is what I'm 
like, okay, boxing, maybe not meant for me. The black guy is not a good look. So I decide, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give that up. And then I go on to, <laughs> love the sport. And then I go on to a more delicate sport, rugby. <laughs> And so I started a team with this Portuguese guy, and we're training, and I, again, I'm significantly larger than the other women where I'm living, Galigua Americana. And um, so, so we're playing rugby, and we've been training for six months, and I, I mean, I really think I'm hot shit. Like, tackling these little people is like tackling babies. Like, they're soft, they're squishy, and whoop, they fall right down, you know? <laughs> Just like a baby. So here I am tackling these babies, and I think I'm really good. And so we've been training for six months, we get money to go to this competition, and we drive for 10 hours to the coast, we're getting ready to compete, we get off the bus, and it is immediately apparent that we are unprepared. We're gonna get punished. These women are massive, massive. I mean, they're like Felipe times 10. They're muscled, they're trained. We are gonna get crushed. If I am a baby, if you know, they're babies, all of a sudden like I'm a baby and they're, I don't know, fetuses, like it's gonna be bad. So, so sure enough, the game starts, we are just getting crushed. We can't get past them, we can't tackle them. It's, you know, it's like five million and two to zero. And past halftime, we come out of formation and by some miracle of God, the ball gets passed to me, I'm a hooker. <laughs> so I catch the ball and the field opens up before me. And all I hear is, Vai Galigua Americana! And so I take off, I take off. And all of a sudden, I feel it again. I feel the thunder. I feel it, and I turn around. Fire is coming out of her nose. This woman is going to eat me, and I am like, <laughs> and I see it, I see the line, it's right there, and I'm so close, and, ooh, the ball rolls out of my hand. I was tackled. <laughs> and that was when I decided to study sports instead of play them. Uh. <laughs>